Hello and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show with me, Ralph Friedrichs. Well, folks, the Pope is gone and uh, life goes back to the way it was. And I hope, as I said in my previous videos, that uh, we all adhere to everything the Pope had said. Everything the Pope has told us should kind of stick in our hearts and in, in our mind. And we can't fall back to the same old. We need to lift ourselves up. We need to continue loving each other, treat each other as we want to be treated. And we need to remember this one important factor in life. And that factor is it doesn't matter where you came from. It does not matter where you came from. What matters is where you're going. Folks, today's topic that I want to talk about is the importance of honesty in recovery. It is super, super important that we are honest in our recovery. And even if you have not yet gone uh, into in even the thought of recovery, if you're just kind of on a seesaw and not decided yet which way to go, listen to what I have to tell you today. I haven't done a commercial in the last two videos, so I want to give a shout out to Larry Geist from the Geist Academy. You can reach him at 516-485-2741. That's 516-485-2741. Folks, Larry Geist is an addiction recovery coach. He's a life coach. He will help you go from your addiction to your recovery, hand in hand, 24 hours at a time. He will never, ever... Um, Treat yesterday as if, let me just turn this down, this cell phone here, because we don't want that to go off during the show doing that. He doesn't want to talk about yesterday to you. He doesn't want to even give you any chance of having a trigger, a stressor, or a relapse. Larry Geist is an addiction recovery coach, a life coach. He will help lift you up today and lift you and guide you and nudge you to tomorrow. Call him at 516-485-2741. Go on the internet and you can find me at www.odysseyconsultant.org that's www.odysseyconsultant.org that is Larry Geist from the Geist Academy when you call me at 516-485-2741 you better make sure that you let him know that you heard about him on the Take Your Life Back Today show with me Ralph Friedrichs because he will be thrilled to hear that because him and I we do the same thing we work hand in hand but I look at him as my senior because he has so much experience. Larry Geist from the Geist Academy, 516-485-2741. Give him a call today. GlobalEyeglasses.com, where they are focused on saving you money. I am focused on helping you with my 30 years in the optometry business. You need to go to www.globaleyeglasses.com. You need to find a frame, and I know it's going to be tough because they only have about 1,200 frames. That is a little side joke, but 1,200 frames combined with children, men's and ladies. Full frames, metal or plastic, half frames, metal or plastic, no frame at all. Folks, globaleyeglasses.com. They have progressive line bifocals. They have transitions, photochromatics, polarization, thin lenses. They have shatterproof lenses. They have th uh, high index lenses. They have coatings like anti-reflecting coating and UV coating, all available at www.globaleyeglasses.com. If you have any questions whatsoever about what to order, give me a text at 631-599-0218, 631-599-0218. You can also call my hotline, which is my hotline for this show. However, I don't mind helping you on both ends of the situation. On one end, I will help you with your life. I will help take your life back, whether it's for addiction, whether it's for depression, whether it's for self-esteem issue. On the other end, I will make sure that you can see so you can read the material I will give you to read up on the situation you're at. Give us a call. Go to www.globaleyeglasses.com. The importance of honesty and recovery. Honesty is a moral characteristic. Honesty is one of the most respected of all moral characteristics. If it becomes known that a respected individual has behaved dishonestly, it can cause devastating harm to their reputation. Some types of dishonesty are more acceptable than others. Most people tell fibs or white lies, known, uh, also known as white lies, from time to time. There is even a therapeutic fibbing clause. Other people would claim that all types of dishonesty are bad no matter which way you look at it. Those people who are trying to rebuild their life after an addiction need to pay particular attention to honesty. 
They need to not only be truthful with other people, but more importantly, they need to be truthful for yourself. I touched base on this yesterday's show, is that I cannot be honest with you if I can't be honest with myself. Failure to establish honesty as a personal quality may mean that the individual will be more at risk of relapse. It could also mean that they live in a life of recovery that is not fulfilling. It could lead to dry, drunk syndrome, dishonesty, and addiction. Those who become addicted to alcohol and or drugs will usually live a life that involves plenty of dishonesty, and it's very unfortunate. This is because substance abuse is going to bring them into a conflict with many people. In order to avoid such conflicts, the addict needs to lie to sugarcoat every situation. So when their boss wants to know why they are not at work, they might claim that they picked up some uh, sort of cold or stomach virus. The life of an addict tends to involve telling one lie after another, snowballing into a huge lie. The most damaging of all will be the lies that the addict tells themselves while they're looking in the mirror. All addicts rely on self-deception and denial in order to keep abusing their favorite alcohol and or drugs. The evidence of destruction caused by their addiction is usually plain for everyone else to see, but the addict is a able to hide from the truth. It is only when the evidence of destructiveness of their behavior becomes too overwhelming to ignore themselves that they are more than willing to start changing it. I call that the wall of denial. Once they drop that wall of denial uh, and they start being honest with themselves, that is rock bottom. Honesty is what finally leads people into recovery and that is this and that keeps them uh, in a straight line with a future life and sobriety. Reasons for dishonesty in recovery. There are a number of reasons why people in recovery will behave dishonestly including the following. They fear the consequences of their actions and so they like to protect themselves from these consequences. Lying is a habit. The more people do it, the more people likely to do it in the future. It is easy to slip into a habit of lying until dishonesty just becomes an almost, almost automatic response, almost like a kleptomaniac stealing. Dishonesty can produce desirable outcomes both socially and economically. There is therefore that temptation to use this as a tool to fulfill desires. The problem is that the long-term consequences of dishonesty are usually negative. Addicts tend to lie without even realizing it. This is because they are so self-deluded that they are unable to see the truth. Even those who give up on alcohol and drugs can still become self-deluded again in the future. Some lies may be said to protect other people and so may be considered relatively harmless. Don't look very attractive when you look at them. No matter how harmless or how they hurt people, lie is a lie. The dangers of dishonesty in recovery, folks. Dishonesty in recovery is dangerous because of the following reasons. It is a common relapse trigger. It means that the individual is returning to old, ineffective coping strategies for dealing with life. The most common reason why people relapse after the period of sobriety is that they become stuck in recovery. This often happens because they have stopped being honest with themselves and with people around them, especially the most loved people in their lives. They feel unwilling to face the challenge in the path before them, so they try to hide it from and start denying. No further progress can happen until the individual can clearly acknowledge what the problem is and be willing to take action in the remedy of that situation. If friends and family find out find out about the dishonesty, it can destroy any progress that has been made in rebuilding relationships with your husband, your wife, your children, your grandparents, your mother, your father. Programs such as the 12-step program require the people to rigorously become honest. If the individual begins to behave dishonestly, it will mean that they will be unable to benefit from this program, hence uh, probably fall back into their addiction abuse. Dishonesty can lead to feelings of guilt afterwards. The individual who is dealing with too much guilt in recovery can find it hard to discover the real happiness that they might have had they stayed honest. 
It was the failure of an individual to be honest with themselves that kept them trapped in the addiction in the first place. Let me just bring this down a little. There we go. Uh, if they allow, the, allow self-deception to once again take hold of their life, then they are likely to question the value of sobriety and need to refrain from drugs and alcohols totally. Honestly, honestly allows for the healing of an individual and those close to them. If people continue to be dishonest, then it means that the healing will never, ever take place. Folks, this is a good one. Honestly and dishonestly will never happen during certain sessions unless the person wants to hear it. Honesty and dishonesty will never take effect during any session, whether it's 12, 12 or my videos, unless you want to hear it. If there is no honesty, then there can be little benefit from any treatment, including those sessions. How to increase honesty in recovery. Honesty is a key element of any successful life away from addiction. It is therefore important that people develop this moral characteristic. Here are a few ways to increase honesty in your recovery and my recovery. The key to breaking away from dishonesty is to admit when it has happened as soon as possible after it happened. Those who are in the 12-step fellowship will be asked to do this as part of step number 10. Continue to take personal inventory and when we are wrong, promptly admit it. I believe that transparency in recovery is very important. It can be hard to own up to dishonesty, but it makes it harder to uh, be dishonest in the future. Developing honesty is like building up muscles. The more people do it, the more honest they become. Keeping a journal is a useful way to track behavior. It gives people the opportunity to look back on their day to look for examples of dishonest behavior. Journaling also reduces the risk of becoming caught up in self-delusion because things appear clearer when they are written down on paper and when you can backtrack accordingly. If people do not value honesty, they will not put much effort into the living a life that is built upon it. Therefore, it is vital that the individual has a clear understanding of the importance of honesty and the dangers of dishonesty in recovery. It is usual for people to play down the significance of certain lies. They can justify the telling of white lies. While there are times when telling a lie might be less of the two evils or might be telling a white lie is less of two evils, it is not a good idea to view any type of dishonesty in recovery uh, as acceptable by no means. Ideally, the individual should be aiming for complete honesty, although they are unlikely to ever achieve this without proper guidance and direction, proper people, proper people around them. I always say to be honest, to be positive, is to be around the people accordingly. The importance of honesty in recovery is, the, is a huge, it is probably the hugest other than spirituality uh, to tackle. Honesty is a moral characteristic. Honesty is the most respected of all moral characteristics. Dishonesty of addiction, those who become addicted to alcohol or drugs will usually live a life that involves plenty of dishonesty. This is because substance abuse is going to bring them into conflict with other people, therefore they will avoid it at any cost by saying whatever, and I used to call it to appease people. Well, all addicts rely on self-deception and denial in order to keep abusing their favorite uh, chemicals. The evidence of destruction caused by their addiction is usually plain for everyone else, including your loved ones, to see. But until you see it, until you see how bad it has crumbled around you, your life is falling apart, you will never be able to do You need to be honest with yourself before you can be honest with people. What are some of the reasons for dishonesty and recovery? The reasons are they fear the consequences of their action and so lie to protect themselves from these consequences. Lying is a habit. The more people do it, the more likely uh, people in, uh, will do it in the future. Dishonesty can produce desirable outcomes both socially and economically. Addicts tend to lie even without realizing it. 
It's because they become almost equivalent to a kleptomaniac. They will just lie just because they can. Some lies may be said to protect other people, and so may be considered relatively harmless. Don't look very attractive when you look at any lie because they're ugly. Lies are just uh, something that you don't want to. Whether they're white lies, good lies, bad lies, lies is the key word. The dangers of dishonesty and recovery. Dishonesty and recovery is ain't that dangerous because it is common relapse trigger. It's a stressor. It means that the individual is returning to the old, ineffective coping strategies for dealing with life. The most common reason why people relapse after a period of sobriety is they become stuck in recovery. It also means if friends and family find out about the dishonesty, it can destroy all the relationships, all the things that you've been building up for a month, two months, a year, 20 years. Programs such as 12 Steps require that people are rigorously honest. If the individual begins to behave dishonestly, it will mean that they are unable to benefit from this program or from any other program. Dishonesty can lead to feelings of guilt afterwards. The individual who is dealing with too much guilt in recovery can find it hard to discover real happiness. Honesty allows for healing of the individual and those close to them. If people continue to be dishonest, then it means that they are healing, then the healing will never ever take place. Dishonesty, uh, dishonesty during sessions with yourself will give you dishonest results during those sessions. If you're looking truly for honest results from an honest person, meaning you, you need to be honest with yourself. How do you increase honesty in recovery? Well, here are some keys. The key to, is, the key to breaking away from dishonesty is to admit when it has happened right away. Those who are in the 12-step program will be asked to do part of this, and it's called Step 10, and it's continued to take personal inventory even when we were wrong, promptly admit to it. Another key step would be developing honesty is like building up muscles. The more you, people do it, the more honest they become. Also, keeping a journal is a useful, a useful way to track behavior. It gives people the opportunity to look back on the day to look for any examples of any dishonest behavior. Journaling also reduces the risk of becoming caught up in self-delusion because things appear clearer when you're looking at it black and white. If people do not value honesty, then they will not put much effort into living a life that is built upon it. Therefore, it is vital that the individual has a clear understanding of the importance of honesty and the dangers of dishonesty in recovery. It is usual for people to play down the significance of certain lies. They can justify telling of white lies. While there are times when telling a lie might be the less of two evils, folks, it is not a good idea to view any type of dishonesty and recovery as acceptable. Ideally, the individual should be aiming for complete honesty, 100%, no ifs, buts, or abouts. Although, uh, although they are unlikely to ever achieve this, if they can't be honest with themselves. Folks, remember, it is not yesterday that's important. It's where you're going tomorrow. Can you go tomorrow? Shoot for the goal of being honest with yourself because when you are honest with yourself, my friends, you will be honest with other people. Wherever you might be watching me right now, whether it's the homeless shelter, the jails, the nursing home, your kitchen living room, Step up, get up, go in the mirror, and take a look at that mirror. You see that reflection? First of all, yes, you are beautiful, you are good looking. But now ask yourself while you're looking in a mirror, are you honest with yourself? And if you even have one ounce of thought, of negative thought, or of uh, uh, any thought that you might have some sort of dishonesty in there, today is the day to change. Every day is a day for you to have an opportunity as long as you're breathing and your eyes are blinking, an opportunity to make changes for a better tomorrow. That's why I always say a sober today, I promise, will give you a better tomorrow. And that's the, that's the, the truth of the matter. I promise you that. Stay sober today, you will get a better tomorrow. Start thinking positive thoughts in your head, in your mind and in your heart and you will get positive results no matter where you are out there in my my video land watching me right now 
I can guarantee you this. I've been in the worst situations in my life, down in the dumps with nothing, including not even myself within my own body. But yet, while I'm on the floor, the gravel bottom of rock bottom, I clawed my way out, inch by inch, step by step, because all changes only happen with small steps, and I kept clawing out of that pit of rock bottom until I saw the light at the top and I put my arms to the lid of the top of this this pit, this rock bottom pit, and I pulled myself up and I looked around and that, my friend, is where sobriety started for me and it can start for you. Just do it. Reach out to do two things right now for a new life for you. So let me help take your life back by letting you know to break that wall of denial and once you break that wall of denial, the next step is to reach out for your power. Your higher power is so important. And once you reach out for that higher power, it will all come together and you will lift yourself up like I did. And look around. Below you is that gravel pit of rock bottom. And you pull yourself up further. And the next thing you know, you're out of that pit. And you will start crawling. And you will start walking and you will start running of a new life of sobriety. All changes happen with very small steps. Never forget that you will not always get results right away. Don't be anxious to see those results. Be anxious about building on a future, a new you. Isn't it time for you to take your life back? Folks, lead by example, tell your children no to drugs and alcohol by you not drinking or smoking or using profanity. Be the hero. Be the designated role model that God Almighty designated you to be. Start today. I hope to God, no matter where you are in the world watching me, that you have the best day of your life. And I also hope that no matter where you are in the world watching me, and you watch the Pope, that whatever the Pope has said in the last week, that it adheres to you, it sticks to you like Velcro for the rest of your life. I know he impacted me and I know it will stick to me and I will make sure that I continue follow the, 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 the Pope and, and follow all the instructions that he gave all of us. Love one another. Do unto others as you would want done unto you. That is such an easy concept to go by in life. And start today with your new life. I hope to God, no matter where you are, you have the best day of your life. But I really hope, and I pray each and every show that I do, that no matter where you are out there, that you have a sober rest of your life. And may God bless you.